This is Peter. And this is Tom. And you're listening to History Teachers Talking Podcasts. All right, this is Peter Zablocki and Thomas Reska, and welcome back to our podcast. Danielle Elia joins us again today, back by popular demand. Welcome back, Danielle. Thanks for having me. This is not going to be a happy go lucky kind of podcast we don't, um, we don't usually have happy go lucky ones though you know i noticed that we should we Lately. should do something happy go lucky <laughs> well today we're going to be looking at some of the um well, i guess well-known and unknown and just some of the most infamous medieval torture devices that uh people have dreamed up throughout time throughout history other ways they used to inflict damage on others that's basically what we're looking at you thought about how creative these people got in inflicting pain in Medieval times is just is surreal to me. Yeah. It took a lot. It took a lot of thought to put this together. Yeah, and also like looking at it, and again, I'm not a world history kind of guy. That's why we have Danielle here to help us out. But like, what's happening in medieval Europe that is prompting so much violence? Like, what on earth? Like, what what exactly is the Middle Ages? What is medieval Europe? Danielle, maybe you could get us started before we kind of go into some of these torture devices. Well, if you're looking at the the beginning of the Middle Ages, especially in Europe, we're looking at the fall of the Roman Empire. And you have Mm -hmm. different chiefdoms. Some of them eventually turn into kingdoms that develop, but they're not the idea of what we have is like a huge, big country. It might only be a couple hundred people um, living under, you know, someone's rule at the beginning. And then towards the end, when the feudal system's breaking down, you have a lot of the more modern ideas of country uh, that we have today being formed across Europe. And, you know, all of it's based on safety at first, which is ironic, right? Like we're torturing people for safety, right. but it's, it's an exchange, right? Like I'm going to give you loyalty to lead and you're going to provide me with, you know, a spot in your kingdom or chiefdom to stay safe, to stay safe in this, this world that's completely new because there wasn't a lot of order there's a lot of chaos going on, right? So you have warring tribes, groups, um, peoples, and it's a, you know, it's a vie for power at the beginning. So initially, I mean, I guess the Europeans medieval period technically lasts from fifth, right, to the 15th century. That's what, that's kind of a very broad time period. It's like a thousand years. Torture was used kind of depending on a victim's crime, gender, social status. It was very specific uh, also to what type of crime you committed, um, there was specific methods, devices, instruments. Uh, the point was to really like prolong life as long as possible while inflicting the most pain before the person finally either gave up the secret or admitted to doing something that they might have or might not have done or simply because they were an enemy of a state. Yeah, or That's to send a message, right, to scare someone, possibly yeah, you know, yeah. try to shame them for a punishment to obviously deter people in the future yeah, from going down deter other people exactly if, if they see someone else getting you know their arms ripped off or getting disemboweled that might make them think twice before they go against the king or do something so it's fear is definitely a major reason cool. for this too and you would have thought they had enough like killing i mean the black death was right smack center or almost right 1347 mm-hmm. 1350 Right. Which killed, what, 20 million people in Europe, which is insane. Let, I feel like we should kind of just get to some of these torture devices. And I, I guess we should preface this because I know we have some family members listening to this, that some of these things that we are talking about today are kind of gruesome. So this no, is gruesome. The, uh, yeah, this is the disclaimer. Well, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say kinda. They're just I'd, yeah, say, yeah. I'd say definitely. Yeah. Okay. So they're, they're gruesome. So I'm just throwing that out there. If someone's listening to it, like, you know, with your kids and stuff, just throwing that out there that there might be some intense stuff. Good times. Good times. Um, all right. Who wants to, uh, who wants to throw one out there that you kind of want to go with? I just want to bring something up that I actually found pretty interesting before we start with the, the, the methods and devices. Um, going back to like Greek and Roman times, a lot of times torture was only used for interrogation purposes. And the only time they would use torture in that would be on slaves. So the torture that we think of as we're talking about this really doesn't like come out until the second century, Um, Hmm. which, you know, I just found interesting because sometimes we we don't have a an idea when to place this. But uh, the word torture is actually French, supposedly, but it does stem from Latin 
And it means in Latin to twist. So the church, really? the Roman Catholic church did not, um, or I should say Christianity, Christendom at this point, frowned upon shedding blood at first. So there was a lot of twisty things that we're going to talk about today. Probably that's why they twist instead of just cut in many uh, scenarios. We start to see torturing take off a little bit more with Norman the Conqueror coming from the modern day Normandy area of France, which was settled previously by the Vikings in a truce. And Norman the Conqueror is going to go and conquer Britannia, you know, at least the southern portion of what we think of as England now. So with that, if you had someone that had a half truth and there was some evidence that maybe they were lying or committed a crime, it was they were allowed to be tortured at that point. And I mean, some people were already sentenced to death. So you're just trying to get information out of them. Um, and that's where we start to see some torture methods pick up, at least in that region of Europe. Yeah. So you want to just do All right. So are we doing any order to this? No, we're just kind of throwing different torture things out, right? Yeah. The first one that kind of popped up for me on numerous places I looked at was the rack, which seems kind of simple in a sense. And I feel like I've seen this in movies before. So basically yeah, you have a victim's ankles, them. right? Yeah. Victim's an ankles are strapped to one end of this device and the wrist to another. And there's a mechanism that basically is cranked. Um, and what it does is it stretches the victim's limbs, uh, you know, above their head and below. And eventually what you start to hear is just victim's joints being dislocated. And eventually if the victim did not confess, um, he or she would be torn apart. Like that, that one, that one's pretty intense. And yeah, I saw that probably, one too. And they, they used to add yeah. stuff to the rack too. I'm sure you saw that. Like there were a lot of times oh, yeah. they would, the rack was like part of like other torture. They would light a fire under it, or they would also like cut people too. And they would like stretch them out, put wraps on them as they would use the rack. So it was kind of like a one they could add things to depending on how, I guess the crime and how right. malicious the person doing it was. Yeah. They could modify. Yeah. <laughs> people couldn't walk either or you know like they were messed up after this there was a lady um ann Askow, who she was she was pretty much going to get condemned to death for heresy so they put her on the rack they couldn't get more information so they had to carry her in a chair to burn her alive afterwards so this is you know wow. it destroys you yeah well i saw one that was a little less um wasn't one that necessarily killed you but it was one that they did it was called um the pair of anguish or the choke oh, that pair. Was disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a way basically they would um it was done to men or women. A lot of times if depending on what they did, blasphemy, liars. And yeah. it was basically and if this even homosexuality the, for men, that was yeah, yeah. And, if, and, yep. and for women, if they believed that a woman um had a miscarriage and they like purposely had a miscarriage, they would do this to them. Where they would yep. insert this pair, right? it was like this metal device into one of the orifices of the body and it had these four metal leaves on it and they slowly separated each one as a torture um, turned the screw on the top and they could use it to tear the skin, expand it, and they could really mutilate the victim. It really caused death, but it was, again, it was usually followed by other methods. So they would do this first yeah, and then kind of as like the precursor to everything else that was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, so so essentially they would insert it to vagina for women, anus for homosexuals, yeah. well, and into the mouths of any crashing. form of liars if you were accused of lying. Um, and they would just crank this screw, which was literally just slowly rip things apart. That's um, really what we see a lot of these are. They're like stretching. They're like unnatural movements, right? Extending, uh, you know, ripping tendons, things that are going to hurt. Like, these are designed to cause pain. So let's go to the breaking wheel. So the breaking wheel... Um, a lot of times these were not used for confessions. They were used to torture you before they executed you. Um, but they would have cogs or teeth on the wheel and then lay the victim on top of the wheel. So like imagine the wheel being flat and then with these spiky things, we lay you on top. And uh, if it was an execution uh, day for you and they weren't just trying to get a confession in this case, they would have spectators that could watch and then midway through they would like lift the wheel up so people could see it. They would literally go with a hammer or a mallet and like smash your limb into the spikes to mm. slowly put you through a lot of anguish. I'm sure it was a pretty noisy, bloody ordeal. And sometimes it would also tie people um, face down on the wheel and stand the wheel up mm. and then like twist it to like break your toes, you know, like put the wheel on top of your feet as it spun. 
it, yeah, they, they got pretty creative with this stuff. Talk about like crushing. Uh, the thumb screws is one that I came across as well. And they said, basically, you were not meant to die from this, right? It was just supposed to cause massive you know, agony. And thumb screws kind of make sense. But it was a device that consisted of these three upright metal bars. And you would place one's thumbs between them. And then it was like a wooden bar that would slide down along these metal bars. And it basically worked kind of like a nutcracker where they would press this this bar down these metal, you know, on your thumb, basically, just, you know, squeezing it, crushing it. Um, until like you just had pulp in a sense. So these thumb screws were a very elaborate device to crush people's fingers. And oftentimes they didn't stop with a the thumb. They would just crush all 10 fingers. Um, you know, if someone did not confess to whatever they were supposed to confess to. So it seems yeah. like innocent cause it's small. It's, that's well, crazy. they also put spikes on the, the bar they would push down cause your thing, your thumbs in a vice, right? Um, and then it would crack your fingernail first and then start to tear the flesh off of that, which most people would pass out before, you know, the, the deal was done. Well, you Just guys know me pretty well. I get a paper cut and I pass out. So this would yeah, really you, you wouldn't be so, I'm surprised you want to do this topic, Pete, because I'm thinking just the, the visualization <laughs> might over here, guys. at one point. Yeah. You yeah if you hear out. silence. <laughs> If you hear silence, that means, that means I Googled something and then I shouldn't have Googled. Yeah. <laughs> that means he fainted on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. The rat torture. They put you on like a flat table, put by laying on your back, and uh, they would put a metal box of rats over your stomach and on top of your chest. And since it's metal, they can't chew through it. So they would start a fire on the top. And the rats panicking because they don't want to die start to chew through your flesh of your stomach and your body um, to escape. So that was to the idea is like, right, if they start and they don't chew too far, could just be torture. But this could also be an execution method as well. That's also something that if you guys have heard of the Iceman. He was like this um, serial killer, like from the mafia. No. Yeah. He, used to, he used to do that, too. He yeah, really? Yeah. A couple of times, yeah. He he heard about it, and wanted to see if it would work, and he's like, you know what, it did. Put a bunch of rats on them and in a, in a metal box and set it on fire. He's like, oh, I'll come back later, see what happened. And he's like, oh yeah, they they went right through them. He was like surprised. Yeah, and so, sometimes oh we think we have bad days, right? And then you like yeah. read this stuff, and it's just unfathomable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might pass out. <laughs> Relax. It'll be okay, Pete. Uh, this is kind of gross, man. I don't. Well, I don't no know. Because the other thing, like they used to use. Like we talked about a lot of like the crushing things and the devices they made, but something very simple that I saw was just something often called um, the boat. And they actually used this in Persia. But what they would do is they would haul out a tree or a log and between the two boats, they had a um, con they put a convict and they were chained to it. They couldn't get up and they were excessively fed milk and honey. And since they couldn't move the honey, the milk would spill over their body. So as soon as you get flies, bees, rats would come and they'd start to eat the mixture off of them. And as they're doing it, they're biting away their skin as this is going on. And then eventually maggots and other insects start to crawl around and infest the wounds. And the person would be tied in this small space that they, that they, this is it. They were just like floating on this river basically uh, with other convicts and they would start to you know, defecate. So it'd be very um, dirty. They get infected and they would essentially be eaten alive over days or weeks, just waiting to die as this happened as flies and rats and nature just kind of like slowly decompose them. And that, that, that was oh. their punishment. Yeah. All the times they were just uh. they were tied in all the times they were put in water and just tied to like a, a stake in the water. The same thing. They either they are always be giving them honey and milk, all that sweet, so I would attract animals and just let that animals just eat them basically alive as they were eating the milk and the honey. Yeah, and your head would be like above the tide water, right? Of so the like water, yeah, just above nice the water, yeah. They even put them in a boat or tie them to a tree or something by the water, one or the other. Yeah. That's actually a great segue because I wanted to talk about um the Countess of Hungary. In the late oh. 16th, <laughs> sorry, Pete, are you going to be able to segue? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting quiet <laughs> over here. I don't fucking handle this. The late 16th century, early 17th century. I think I have the, the dates right there. Um, but she also used something similar, right? But she's from Hungary, so it wasn't too far away from that region. And it was honey within, you know, cover their victims in honey with insects to, to eat away at their flesh. But she was also notorious for cutting people's faces whether it was like part of your nose off or your cheek putting needles in people's fingers um but 
She uh, was also known to possibly torture over and kill over 400 people. Mad Magazine. Advertising mascots. B-movie posters. And cartoons. Oh yeah, can't forget cartoons. If you get the funky connection that ties these pop culture gems together, you'll dig two designers walk into a bar. See, we're a couple of creatively curious pals living between the bookends of grand museums and dive bars. Hey, you know the place. The sweet spot where highbrow and lowbrow become drinking buddies. So join our barroom chats as we talk influential work and uncover stories of how the familiar became iconic. Think behind the music for the stuff we love. Check out our website at two designers walk into a bar.com and listen wherever you get your podcasts or visit evergreenpodcasts.com. And this is the Countess Elizabeth Bathray. I think I'm saying oh, yeah, she, right. Yeah, she was inspiration for the female vampires, right? Or yeah, like, like Dracula. So, yeah. I think uh, she was related to someone on the Transylvanian throne and also the King of Poland at one point. But she was supposedly rumored to be one of the first to use what we now know as the Iron Maiden, the cabinet full of spikes that you would literally like open up like almost a mummy casing, as we think of it. And then there's spikes everywhere. Put the person in there and close the door so they're in darkness. And if they move, they're going to end up bleeding. Um, And there's spikes. But it was very specific. You weren't a spikes very specific, Danielle. Like, that would strategically be placed to pierce like several organs of the person. So that way they didn't really die right away. It was like yeah. shorter spikes. So the wounds would be instant, you know, obviously it would be fatal, but not right away. Yeah. These things were made to like prolong. They weren't like quick deaths. They were the prolonged death and cause as much pain as possible. But what <laughs> about the saw torture? You see, you see the pictures of like saw torture, like the drawings, like there's no real yeah. pictures, but like the drawings, the, yeah. it's like the people have such, they have like, they're like smiling as they're doing it. It's basically, they would hang someone upside down. And um, they increased the blood flow to the head. And then a large saw was placed between legs. There were two executioners. I think like those like lumberjacks, the two saws, yeah, with yeah, the handles yeah. on the end. And they're just saw, going yeah. back and forth. And the saw is right between the person's legs. And they're just cutting down. And the Jeez. executioners would slowly cut through the person's body in half. And a lot of times they would drop the po- process. You know, it would make the death as painful and as long as possible. So you're just hanging upside down as someone's sawing between your legs. You're cutting you in half, basically, yeah. from between your legs. And That's almost what... Well, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, since we're talking about between the legs, the Judas um, cradle, right? Supposedly yeah. one of the most feared throughout Europe, um, widely used. It was basically a, a person was strapped into restraints and lowered, like, on a chair with a pyramid shaped seat. And it would insert the point of the chair, would slowly tear, whether it would be a vagina or anus or anything, really. And they would actually put weights on top of a person. So as they were being dragged down on this pyramid shaped chair it would basically impale them so, that's like a worse version of the uh, wooden horse or the spanish donkey which was a triangle shape instead that they would have you straddle and weigh you down oh that's great that's great <laughs> then you <laughs> then you had the brazen bull which i also saw that was interesting right you basically they put um they said it was like most res- something that resembled hell because they would place a person inside this bronze bull, yeah. bull basically and uh there was a, like a door on the side to place the person in there and then once inside the door was locked and they heated this um stove basically and and cooked this bull so this bull gets super hot and as it was heating up and getting hot the person inside would start to burn alive but because they're when they were burning alive they started screaming and moving and trying to get out and the agony of it all it made it look like the bull was actually moving and people yeah. would sit around this and see this as an entertainment like oh this is cool but like and they know the person was dead and like the smoke was coming out of like the nose yeah. right but that's it was yeah. like, because that means they were like cooking in their own fat pretty much inside Oh. Yeah, people, I always wonder how they think these up, though. Like, oh, let's make a bowl and put them inside of a bowl and Nuts. put fire underneath them. Like, you could just put fire underneath someone and burn them alive, but no, we're going to make it even, even more intense, you know? Ugh. Well, all right. They had one oh. called the uh, the Heretics Fort, the Heretics yeah. Fort, sorry, sorry. Um, where they put like a belt strap around your neck and then just imagine having like a fork almost like you're barbecuing with it, um, strapped to the choker and then pointed underneath your chin in that soft spot that we all have. And then the other end of it 
is pushed against the top part of your collarbone where it's soft, like right where your throat ends. And um, you couldn't fall asleep. So you'd have to stay awake. Otherwise, it would just pierce through, you know, the top of your head or straight into your chest. Um, so you, people, you know, sleep deprived, trying to stay awake, did start to give information out. And uh, this was used to make people talk, obviously. The scavenger's daughter. Did you guys see that one? Yes. It was basically from what I got. It was like a giant set of iron dentures. And they said it would like place a person like a hinge in the middle. So think of like like then like teeth, almost fake teeth. And it would like basically it was like a hoop, right, of iron with a hinge in the middle. And the victim was forced to crouch on one half of it. And they would simply close them um, inside these like iron dentures. And then the torturer was basically tightened this hinge and would just crush the victim more. As it's like victim magic just being like closed off like a sandwich almost. Um, involuntary Fashion. crouch. Ribs, breastbone cracking, spine cracking. It just, yeah, that one's pretty bad. Look. I saw one of the most painful ones was something called, the, kind of like that on a smaller version, used to torture the crocodile shears. And it was basically used to mutilate people who um, tried to kill the king. And it was basically a metallic device, looked like a crocodile's mouth, but they would heat it up. And then they would uh, use it to amputate the limbs and just put on, just crush the limbs and tear, just literally tear them off with these things. So think of like a giant pair of scissors just with like teeth. That's what it looked like more or less. But um, again, it would, it, would, it would deter people from trying to do these things. Yeah. I mean, the one that I thought was just, just I, I can't even imagine, the breast ripper. I mean, like, I feel like we're avoiding this one. This one was like... Really, they did have yeah. really gruesome ones for women. Like the, everyone that yeah. deal with women would definitely like focus on the women, on women like body parts and like their femininity really. They wanted to like destroy yeah. that part of it. That kind of what it looked like. Yep. And so the breast ripper, obviously, that's in a name, but um, whenever a woman was accused of adultery, self abortion, heresy, blasphemy, anything, or even like being accused of being a witch, um, so they would they would use this as interrogation initially. But it was a device that was often heated during torture, and then it had these claws, and basically it would place these claws on a woman's breasts, and then they would be like an instrument, would rip their breasts right off their chest. And if the woman did not die, she obviously would be disfigured for the rest of her life. But for the most part, these did result well, in they were, you know, infection. The infection itself yeah. would just kill you. That's what a lot of these were. It was in, yeah. give you infection, get gangrene, something like that, and just Sentence. that's where you would die. Yeah, so, and then that's painful. Like, that's the whole idea. They and had another one pain. for uh, women. This one was less harmful, actually, but it was called the Shrew's Fiddle. And it was pretty much you with a board, they put this device around two women that had a public argument or fight and they put them in this together out in public so they could like shame them and humiliate them. And they were taken out of it once, you know, amends were made and they forgave each other and so forth. Um, and they also had a shame flute for musicians that played bad music. It was almost like a stockade for them. They had to keep their hands in front of them like they were playing a recorder, you know, in that position and walk around town, you know, for a bit of time just to show like, Hey, we don't play bad music or this will happen to you. Wow. Wow. Big time deterrent. Yeah. I mean, the other one I saw here too, is just like looking through everything, a knee splitter. It's very similar to the thumb thing. Um, I'm almost, it's so funny because I'm making this seem like, ah, this one's like no big deal. <laughs> I mean, considering what no, we're but talking any, about. Yeah, if any of these you saw today, but one that actually I saw that was common that they actually changed a little bit, but they're still using it up until just a few decades ago in parts of the world, like India and uh, Brazil, was something called uh, neck lacing. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. know if you saw this, but they would tie someone's arm behind their um, back, then encasing their torso and the arms. There's some, you know, ga not, they would use modern times, more modern times, use gasoline or some sort of, um, combustible and they would um put something else on your neck modern times they were putting on a rubber tire lighting that on fire and then uh, the victim would slowly die from uh from severe burns and from like the fumes and stuff like that and there's like pictures of it it's like pretty gruesome but like they used to do it in medieval times too they would just put like wood in you know in case and set on fire around a person's neck from right there you would be like if oh. it's another way of like you know i guess burn someone alive but just starting on their neck instead but, yeah and they used to tie people up you know with their arms behind their back like that too what is it the strapido and yeah. lift them up to hang them for a period of time and then drop them um trying to get them to talk a little bit more 
but that sounds way worse, but putting like a burning tire on top of them. Yeah, that's like what they said. Yeah, up until like the 80s, this was common practice, but this is what they did. The Spanish boot, it's almost, that, yeah. they put you, you know, like a fitted boot on you. Um, they tighten it up. There's wooden wedges that they start to insert into this boot with a hammer and start to slowly break like all the bones in your foot and so forth. So that one uh, is pretty gruesome. You're going to hear a lot of crunching. But just going back to some of these things where it's like the twisting and the breaking of bones as opposed to the bleeding, even though filleting was done, um, the people, you know, they're just peeling and cutting your skin back a lot of times passed out from loss of blood or just died of shock. But that had roots going back to ancient Rome and the Assyrian, but that was more to kill people when those groups did it. So... Yeah, it's even like when they impaled people. Like that was that was often that was yeah. a form of torture. But ultimately, impaling was uh, the ultimate goal was to kill a person versus just interrogate them. Yeah, but to kill and, them slowly, scare others. Yeah, yeah, scare others. I mean, that's psychological warfare right there too. If you're doing it on the battlefield, you know, with Vlad the, the Impaler. I think you guys talked about him once, didn't you? We did. Yeah, we had one on him. Yeah, yeah that was that was uh, back was in the day. One. A lot of spikes. When I look around, there's so many things with spikes, right? You have the collar person basically held the neck in single position yeah. anytime you move. Yeah, when this was often put in your people's mouths too, right? Like the one yeah. for the tongue. Mm-hmm. But the, the collar one was often used in uh, even for slaves, you know, in the United States in you know 1700s, 1600s, they would use that. Um, there's a lot of different depictions of it in history. The garrot was the, the collar one, but they'd also have it where they added like a crank on the back that you could twist to strangle somebody with it too. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, then you had the iron chair, right? Um, literally, it was like, imagine iron chair. Think of like the iron throne, but nothing fancy like you would have in the Game of Thrones. This is literally spikes everywhere, including by your feet, by the back of your legs, uh, under your arms, under your forearms. Like it was literally a chair made of spikes. So a lot of these that I'm looking at have a, there's something with spikes in here. I don't know. Well, it was just they knew that would hurt people, and you're seeing those things coming towards you. A lot of these things were gruesome to see too. Don't forget, if you just saw them, that would be intimidating. Knowing that was about to happen to you, you're going to confess to anything. Well, the most famous Roman execution method was the crucifix, um, and it actually remained in use for centuries, um, including in medieval times. So, and that one's kind of self-explanatory, and we've all seen images and depictions of this, but. You would have individuals nailed to the cross by their hands and feet and then left there basically for the birds um, and to be abused by locals. So that one's uh, it's like one of the original torture devices. One more to throw in there about the older torture things. The the coffin or the, the hangman's gibbet, that uh, a lot of times it was blasphemy or insults, but a lot of times even piracy, they would put these people in this like what would look like a bird cage, but it was so tight against your body you couldn't move. So if you ever get a chance to see like the Captain Kid picture of it, um, that one's pretty famous. But what they would do is just hang you pretty much from a gallow and just that's it. You're out there and you're left to the elements, whether it's water a de- deprivation because you're thirsty, right? And you you, you haven't drank anything. The temperatures, but the most the closest one to home for us. Um, this used to happen on Ellis Island before it became Ellis Island. It was where they chained up all the pirates to, to send a message to everybody else. There was even a study done um, by Sharon Hawk where examining the effectiveness of physical pain, uh, coercing verbal pressure, and also rapport building. Like, do you get reliable confessions? And the answer is yeah. no. <laughs> People just want the pain to stop. They'll tell you anything. I, she did this, uh, you know, following the ethical board and all this uh, information, you know. Yeah, um, but she used ice water. Um, volunteers, they could stop whenever they wanted to. It was at a certain temperature. And even looking at, you know, temperature pain, um, you know, hey, is do you know where this is? Yes or no? And, you know, obviously you have to follow ethical guidelines now. So you can only get so far with this. But even with that, a uh, study, you know, they found out most people will lie just for the pain to stop to take their hand out of the ice water for a minute. You know, it yeah. was only in there for a couple minutes to begin with. So Nuts. just an interesting little fact. 
I mean, I think, I think again, this is something we could go on and on and on about, but I, yeah. I think we gave the yeah, our listeners sense. a nice intro to this topic. Um, thanks, guys. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that tunes in every week to listen. And you could find us at www.historyteacherstalkingpodcast.com. Uh, wherever you do listen, make sure you click subscribe. Leave us a review. We do like those. But only if you like us. If you don't like us, do not leave us a review. <laughs> And now they're, said that, now they're purposely going to leave those reviews. <laughs> I know, man. I just messed this up. Anyway, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us again. This is awesome. Oh, yeah, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Good stuff. So, everyone else, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. Take it easy. I hope everyone enjoyed our podcast, and if you would like to email us, you can do so at historyteacherspodcast at gmail.com. Around 10,000 BCE, families and tribes of the ancestors to the people of Britain would arrive in the southern part of the island after crossing from land that bridged from Europe. The Welsh built houses, communities, kingdoms, and continued to survive through Romans, Saxons, Danes, and Normans. The language and culture influenced by these sources continued to change and thrive, becoming ancient and modern at the same time. Join me as we travel through the history, meeting the kings, queens, nobles, and everyday people that create and grew modern Wales from the seeds of the ancient past. Creoso, and welcome to the Welsh History Podcast.